Hey everybody, Rob or Gail, your favorite silencer nut job. In today's video, I wanted to dive not too deep, but mildly into the APC223 from BNT. Now in this video, instead of doing a full comprehensive review, I'm going to focus specifically on two topics. One is accuracy, two is suppressors and how it handles different settings of back pressure given it's three different piston adjustable settings. Guys, without wasting any time, let's start with some accuracy testing as well as back pressure. Make sure you hit that like, comment, subscribe. It really does go a long way for the channel. I appreciate you. Let's get into it. Hello, my fellow silencer nut jobs. I'm sorry to interrupt your video. I'll keep it quick. What I'm gonna ask of you is if you have questions for me, please put in the comment section, Q for Rob, and then throw out whatever question you've got. I will collect all of those questions and then I will answer them in video format. And I'll try to do this on a regular basis because there's a lot of great questions hitting that inbox, some very specific, some not so specific, some very general. And I will do my best to get back to all of you in a Letters for Rob video follow-up. Guys, I appreciate you. I'll see you in the comments. One of the greatest features about the APC that I sometimes fail to mention is it is a completely fully ambi gun. I would say my biggest complaint is, yes, you could argue it could be a little bit lighter, but you pay for it in cost and you pay for it in weight when you want this level of reliability and capability. Then I would say my other tiny sub complaint is the bolt catch and release button is Not on both sides. Group. It could afford to be just a little bit larger and maybe even if it had a dovetailed section that scooted a little bit more rearward to make it more accessible to the shooter's firing finger for locking the bolt to the rear. That would be a little bit nicer than the current setup. But all in all, I'm really splitting hairs to come up with the complaints. Chief complaints, a little lighter would help. Not the most affordable of guns. And I wish the bolt catch and release was a little further place back. But other than that, outstanding rifle. Last one. Let's go take a look. Already breaking down this target, we've got the PMC X Tac, a little bit high. All of them are a little bit high on this one. Probably need to do a re zero. So, PMC X Tac is a two inch group. Norma 69 grain ammunition is a two inch group. Not so impressive. Maybe I slipped one of those and that's uh, two inches. Next, we've got the SIG 77 grain match ammunition at 0.5 inches. Then the SIG 40 grain ammunition at 0.75 inches, followed by the American Eagle red box 50 grain hollow point ammunition at one inch. The Fiocchi 40 grain ammunition did 1.2, and the tumbles on impact seems to do pretty poorly, generally speaking, at 1.7. All right, so let's talk about gas settings. The APC223 16 inch has three different gas settings 1.1, 1.3, 1.5. I've had it on 1.5 this entire time for testing, and I find that runs fully reliable without a suppressor. Now, I didn't want to tinker with it until we got to the suppressor section of this video, and now I've got it dropped down to the 1.3 setting. Now, I've already tinkered with this a hand handful of times to test different suppressors and see how it behaves. And what I found thus far is the 1.5 is the super, super like Huxworks, uh, no suppressor or super low back pressure suppressor. The 1.3 is all the like fives, fours, sixes area of back pressure suppressor. And the 1.1 is for the full back pressure suppressors. So now I've got it tuned down to 1.3 with the Stealth Additive Work Suppressor. I've had it on thus far, and now I'm putting some PMC X-Tac in it. Let's look for last round hold open. Still giving last round hold open. Let's drop it to 1.1. All right, now I've got one round, did it with an empty magazine. Historically, I do not get last round hold open on this suppressor. I have to have like an Omega 300 or one of those very full back pressure suppressors. Let's give it a test. Yeah, as per usual, no last round hold open. Again, the 1.1 is like the full back pressure suppressors. The 1.3 is kind of most of my favorite type stuff. And then the 1.5 unsuppressed setting, 
also works with like the Huxworks uh, Flow 556, Flow 762, and their new Range 360. That's the setting for that guy. Alrighty, now that we've had some time to diagnose the accuracy of this weapon, I would say overall, this weapon is pretty darn accurate. If a semi-auto is able to give me repeatable 0.75 inch groups or better given different types of ammunition, I would say it's probably gonna do any job I'm going to ask it to do. Now, of course, I do have some AR-15 type rifles that shoot more accurately than this, but I think if we were to trade accuracy and reliability, reliability takes a much larger place over accuracy because most of the time I'm not going to have my rear bag and my bipod and be stable on a table. I'm more likely to be on a tripod and that's why you see I put a rail right here to attach this to a tripod. Because in my opinion, kind of the most trusted thing I'm going to do with these rifles is coyote hunt. So is it accurate enough to handle coyotes? And the answer is absolutely it is. Do you need to shoot one inch to put down coyotes? No, if you're one inch or better, then you are totally good to go. Now you say, well, coyotes are much bigger than one inch, Rob. Of course they are. You could argue over the kill zone of a coyote, and then you could argue over effective distances and so on. But the reality is when I'm on a tripod, the coyote's trotting in, if the gun shoots one inch or even two inches, then it shoots better than I'm going to shoot from a tripod. And of course I can show you examples where I shoot from a tripod and do better than that, but that's range situations when I've got an unlimited amount of time to get comfortable and get very accurate with this rifle. So I would say for any applicable purpose for this rifle, the accuracy, definitely cuts the mustard. The next is going to be back pressure. So the three different settings, as you saw, I tested just one suppressor in this video. However, I've tested several silencers on this. And yes, I will create a website where you can go to and look at all the different varying levels of back pressure of each silencer and therefore know which silencers specifically I'm referring to. But really kind of like the BNT APC 308 DMR, this too I'm finding to be really perfectly gassed for whatever it is you want to do. So if you put it in the 1.5 setting that covers you for unsuppressed in all the different ammunition I used, as well as the super low back pressure suppressors. Then the 1.3, is designed for their RBS suppressors, which is a position like five. So it's like right in the middle of super low back pressure slash unsuppressed and uh, full back pressure Omega 300 and so on. Right in the middle is the RBS suppressors from BNT. In my experience, that puts it about a position five on a one through 10 kind of day. So the same thing goes with this. They gassed it exactly so. If you got anything in the back pressure range of six, five, or four, then putting it in the 1.3 setting is gonna be perfect for you. If you've got something higher in back pressure, where I have to choke down the gas settings of the rifle speed down to like a three or a two, or in some cases the one setting, meaning full back pressure, then the 1.1 setting will choke off that gas so that you get a soft shooting and incredibly reliable gun. So in the end, I would say accuracy-wise, this thing cuts the mustard. Some of those loads, it did really very well. And then as far as suppressor goes, this has proven to be an outstanding suppressor host and a perfect coyote gun. And of course, it's made by BNT, so we can beat the snot out of it and expect it to run reliably for the rest of its life. Now this one, I did not have Eric at East Valley Tactical put an FRT in yet. I'm kind of deciding if that's something I want to do with this or if I want to keep this strictly for coyote guns. Guys, if you like this content, please make sure you hit that like, comment, subscribe. It really does go a long way for the channel. I super appreciate you guys, and we'll see you in the comments.